Hey everybody, how are you? How are ya? You guys okay? As you can see, I'm wearing my Batman Detective Comic t-shirt. Let me show you. And I'll explain why. Let's see. Why am I wearing my Batman t-shirt? Let's see. There goes my Batman t-shirt, you see. Okay, do you know why I'm wearing my Batman t-shirt? Because <clears throat> the teachings of Muhammad come straight out of a comic book. As you can see, I've titled it Muhammad's Silly and Ridiculous Teachings. And you're going to see why <clears throat> they're silly and ridiculous in a minute. I know it's very early for many people. It's now 8 in the morning where I'm at. 8 in the morning. The reason why I'm doing a very early session. What's up, Tatiana? Yeah, I got your message. I don't know how to do that. When... That's why I need someone to do it for me. I need, I need uh, what do you call it, a partner, a secretary. So if you want to be my secretary, let me know. What's up, Rob Christian? What up? What it be like? Rob Christian, go to his YouTube channel. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Support the brother. Does some great work exposing Islam. But anyway. <clears throat> All right. I know. It's 8 in the morning where I'm at. In other parts of the world, it's going to be evening or late night. So perfect time. The reason why I'm doing it early today, by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, is because I don't know if I'm going to have time to do a live stream later. The reason why I don't know if I'm going to have time to do a live stream later is because I have to attend a Bible study. I'm invited to someone's home to do a Bible study. So I'd appreciate your prayers. Guys, if you can covenant with me and pray and fast, if the Lord puts in your heart for my daughters and I, ask the Lord Jesus to give us the health we need. <clears throat> ask the Lord Jesus to grant me perfect health, to bless my voice, my throat, my lungs and chest, to fill me with the breath of life. The Holy Spirit, <clears throat> grant me the health I need and blessing the sound of my voice, that my voice always stays strong and healthy to use it to glorify Jesus Christ. In Jesus' almighty name, Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. In Jesus' almighty name, I ask the Lord Jesus to grant my daughter salvation at a young age, to fall in love with Jesus. I ask the Lord Jesus to help me to be holy and perfectly in love with Jesus Christ and not just be a hearer, <clears throat> but a doer of his word, to obey his word, love the Lord Jesus, worship the Lord Jesus, glorify the Lord Jesus. I ask the Lord Jesus to also provide. So do pray that the Lord Jesus will keep us safe from COVID-19, that he will shield us from it, if it's real or if it's a lie. Yeah, who knows? But Christ our Lord is sovereign over creation, sovereign over viruses, diseases, and cancer. So I ask the Lord Jesus just to protect us at the home, that none, none of us are sick and get others sick, right? Because, again, I don't have health insurance. I trust the Lord Jesus Christ to heal me because he is Jesus Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. So, all right, so just well, let's tell the Father we love him. Father, we love you. Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, I ask for the health that I need just to use my health to glorify Jesus Christ, to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. And Holy Spirit, fill my throat, my lungs, my chest with life. <clears throat> Anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to, to the ears of your servants. Holy Spirit, take over the session. Invigorate us, rejuvenate us, replenish us, refresh us, reinvigorate us. Supply us with your strength and your power and life from your presence and fill us with love and joy and peace and stillness and guide this conversation. Even though it's a conversation exposing Muhammad, this false prophet, this antichrist, guide me, Holy Spirit, to speak truth without error and bless the household of the living God, the church of Jesus Christ. And wash us in the blood of the Lamb, purify us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. And Christ, increase in us and we decrease and wash our loved ones, my daughters and their mother in the blood of the Lamb, Lord, the blood of the Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit, loosen my tongue, save me from stammering and stuttering and confusion, and have your way and destroy distractions of Satan. We love you, Holy Spirit. We depend on you. We cling to you. We trust in you. 
the eternal spirit of the Father and the Son. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. Lord Jesus, speak life into our bodies and our souls and our spirits and our minds and our hearts. <clears throat> Flood us in your presence, Lord Jesus. Grant me the health that I need to glorify you. And Father, we love you. Abba, we love you. Baba, we love you. Bless us, your children. In Jesus' name, now the Father, the Holy Spirit. All right? Today, it's going to be different, right? I'm not going to be talking about Christian topics, obviously, because I want to spend some time exposing Muhammad. As you know, over 90%, 90% of my sessions are geared towards <clears throat> proclaiming the core doctrines of the Christian faith, right? I prefer to spend more time talking about the Christian faith the core doctrines of the Christian faith, the biblical basis for those doctrines, than I do about exposing Islam. Now, that's ironic, isn't it? Because most people affiliate me, associate me with Islam. And if you believe David Wood, he thinks I'm the best apologist against Islam. And glory to Jesus Christ, I don't believe that. May I never believe that. There are people far more qualified than I, right? I have Sama Dakdo, even have Christian Prince, you know, people who know Arabic more qualified but it's ironic and i mentioned that to boast may the lord jesus crucify my flesh i only mention that because you notice over 90 percent of my sessions and articles over 90 percent of them are all focused on the core doctrines of the christian faith and yet still people associated associate me with uh <laughs> islam that's it's ironic right uh, and also you see i do a lot with refuting joe's witnesses but anyway, uh, what answer, Sonza? Are you telling me what to do, Sonza? Sonza, I don't like you. Just your name upsets me. Okay, And because of that, I don't like you, sir. Okay. Sonza, we're going to declare war on you. And your book, The Art of War, sucks because you suck. Get the hell out of here. How about that? You got to get out of here. Sons, I don't stay here. You got to get out of here because I'm going to embarrass you and your prophet. Piss me upon him. Uh, old. Longer than you were born. Okay. So, uh, sons, I leave. Piss me upon him. Okay. Yeah, how'd you know that, Shemisu? Yeah, I got the ha <laughs> In fact, here, let me, let me embarrass your mother for giving birth to a filthy satanic dog like you. Call me on Skype, Sanza, so I can humiliate Muhammad. Piss be upon him. You got a minute to call me. I'm going to send you to Mecca to lick the black stone. Anyway, with that said, we're going to begin. Tatiana, am I passing your test? Am I living up to your expectations and your approval? What's up, Chaldean? Or am I following your standard? Call me. You got it on Skype. Call me. You got a minute so I can muzzle your prophet. Or am I failing to live up to your standard of what spiritual spiritual Christianity is all about? Okay, folks, let me give you some links so we can begin. Are you ready? <clears throat> Waylon, Waylon, does this challenge say Waylonian, Vernatian, or does it say Shemunian, Waylon? It says Shemunian, right? That means don't tell me what to do on my channel, Waylon. Don't tell me what to do on my channel, Waylon. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't say Waylonian, right? It says Shemunian. Start your channel and do what you do best, telling people what to do. All right? Okay? Yeah. All right. Now, here are some links for you guys. The legends, myths, fables, and the Quran Islamic tradition. Link number one. Link number one. I'm going to give it to you twice. Here you'll find a series of articles documenting some of the silly, stupidest, most irrational teachings you will have ever read or heard from Muhammad. Okay? I don't know what sli means. Okay, now, old, take a hike with your fake spirituality and your fake humbleness, you fake arrogant twit. You think that you're humble. Yep, that's why you got resisted. Okay, anyway, thank you. Okay, that's the first link. Here's the second link, so we can begin. The second link. 
All I'm going to be doing in this session is just read the narrations for you. Okay. Here's the second link. The second link, guys. That's part two. That's part two. Let me get you part one. Be the mind. Was that? Yeah. That's, and here's part one. Okay. Here's part one. I just gave you three links. So we're going to start discussing. So are we in the saddle, guys? Are we ready? This session, I'll be simply reading the hadiths. The hadiths, <clears throat> a hadith means report or narration. When you're talking about Islam, when you're talking about Islam, when you're talking about Sunni Islam especially, hadith refers to the narrations and or reports, narrations and reports attributed to Muhammad or his companions. So you guys know what the hadiths are, right? And I'm going to be focusing on the Sunni hadith collection. The Sunni hadith collection, right? So we're going to be talking about the narrations, reports attributed to Muhammad and or his companions. But we're going to focus on the Sunni hadiths because the majority of Muslims identify as Sunni Muslims. About 85% of the professing Muslims are Sunni Muslims. Now, here's what's beautiful. You can read the major collection of hadiths translated in English online for free. Here you go. Online for free. Sunnah.com. Now, we may have Sunza, the son of the, the devil. Okay, we got this stupid Muhammad in here. Let's see how long he's going to last. So we got a customer this morning. All right, we got a stone licking pagan. Put down your volume, right. dude. Stone pagan. Put down your volume. Okay, Hello? Muhammad and Stone Licker, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Okay. Are you doing fine? What? Are you doing fine? Are you doing fine? Are you doing fine? Yeah. Is Muhammad hey, your daddy? Doing fine? I'm asking you. Yes, I'm doing fine. Okay. Don't don't act as stupid you as your prophet. Don't be as stupid as your prophet. Listen, uh, do you believe, who's Muhammad to you? Huh? Who's Muhammad to I'm you? Huh? Who's Orna? Who's Ma? Huh? Ma Ma is, who's Orna? He's, 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 he's what? Mama is the Oracle trains. What kind? What kind? What? what? Mom, see. Is the person Mama is the person's yeah. oracle in the trains? His persons? He's not a person, he's persons. Mama is the person's oracle in the trains. It's a Vorkara Kara. Uh, si, si, so, 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 so. What are you talking? Why are you talk? Don't make fun of Bruce Lee. I do Jim Kendo. You understand English? What are you talking Stupid this guy there. <laughs> Moron, dude. Hey, we got a good comedy in the morning. That actually helped my throat. La 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 la. All right. All right. Pray for me, guys. That God will keep me healthy for his glory. That was kind of hilarious, wasn't it? Uh Ma Duchna. He sounded like he was Chinese, but man, please disown him. You are a Chinese sister who loves Jesus Christ. I don't know who this guy was. How are you doing? Hi, ah. How are you doing? Muhammad is Parsons. Muhammad is Parsons. How are you doing? Huh? Okay. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you said you were Chinese. Madhuna. What happened? What? Who are you? What is your nationality? Ah, uh, are we about to begin? You ready? You guys got the links? God willing, I'll put them in the description box later. Yeah, I am a Syrian. Are you a Syrian? But I like his accent. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? How are you spiritual? Okay. Are we ready now? Guys, can we get in the saddle? Oh, you're Philippine. You're Filipina. You know, every nationality 
every nationality has its own idiosyncrasies, meaning every language has its own unique features and deficiencies. I've been told that Filipinos really have a hard time pronouncing F, F, right? So instead of saying it Philippines, they'll say Philippines. I am Filipina. I am from Philippines. Am I right? And then the Chinese have a hard time saying R. I know that because I used to be a big Bruce Lee fan and I'm simply big. And so Bruce Lee, being Chinese, would have a hard time saying R. So it says, hey, man, you know you can't be wrong, man. You can't be wrong. In other words, he's trying to say you can't be wrong, but it sounds like he's saying you can't be wrong. Yeah, you're not wrong. You chan. You ain't wrong. You chan, man. <laughs> yeah. The reason why I decided to wear my Batman Detective comic, comic, uh, comic shirt. Hey, by the way, it's not LMAO Knights of Lazarus. How many times I'm going to tell you that? It's LMBO. The reason why I wore my Batman Detective comic shirt, because the things that Muhammad taught are straight out of a comic book, right? Straight out of a comic book. You want me to do that Chinese impression again? And we're going to begin. See? Shamiso Mutasa. I'm right, right? For some reason, the Chinese have a hard time saying R, like Filipinos have a hard time saying P. So, hey, man, you, you know, instead of saying you can't be wrong, it sounds like, man, you can't be wrong, man. Yeah, you ain't wrong. You chan, man. You ain't wrong. You chan. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm going crazy early in the morning, man. Woo, I got issues. Man. And then in the Indian, the Indian, and we're going to begin right now, I promise you. But this is going to be a lot of reading. I hope you're not going to be bored. I'm going to just be reading the Hadiths. I gave you the links. I'm going to be reading the Hadiths. Now, I got to do the Indians, the people from India, not Native American Indians, right? In India, it's no good, no good, problem, problem. With the head shake, man, what this place, man? What, what, you, what you did, man? What, what, what you did? No good, no good, problem. You know what I'm talking about. In fact, it helps my neck, too. Woo. Alisher, what's the AA for, man? God willing, I'll be seeing you soon. Okay, Lord Jesus, be glorified. Increase in us, Lord Jesus. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and the joy of our salvation in Jesus' name. Who's crying? Someone said they're crying. Are you crying because I'm that good looking? Uh -huh. Someone said Oh, you're making me cry with laughter, peace of Christ. Okay, yeah, man. Okay. Man, what is this place? Right, Ravi, man? Ravi, you know what I'm talking, man? Come on, Ravi. You know what I'm talking, man? Come on. Yeah, man. Do cheese party. Do cheese. I must know us. Okay. Man, why he's so wrong, man? Why are you so wrong? Why you wrong, man, for making fun? You wrong, man. You wrong. Don't be chan. Man, I'm from Philippines. I'm Filipina. Filipino. Okay, with that said, let's begin. Are you ready? I gave you the links. If after these sessions, I'll probably do more than one session, you still believe Muhammad is a prophet, then you have serious mental, emotional issues. Seriously, after these sessions. And these come from the most authentic collections attributed to Muhammad. If you're a Sunni Muslim, I'll be quoting primarily from Sahil Bukhari. If you're a Sunni Muslim, Sahil Bukhari is second to the Quran. It is indisputable. What happened, man? What 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 it did, man? What it did? What it did? I talking. What you did, man? What? What did? No, 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 no good, no good, no good problem. All right, let's begin. All right, we're ready. So, folks, the narrations and the articles come from Sa'il Bukhari. Sa'il Bukhari is considered second to the Quran, and it is indisputably authentic according to the most stringent Sunni criteria of Hadith verification. So they can't simply, they can't simply <clears throat> ignore them. If they do, they're being dishonest with you. So I'm going to give you the narrations from the most authentic collection of narrations considered second in terms of authority to the Quran only. 
So do not let them deceive you and tell you, no, this is weak, man. This is weak. No, no, it's sound. Now, are you ready to laugh? Glory to Jesus Christ. We're going to expose Muhammad as a charlatan, as a fraud for the glory of Jesus. So today it's going to be about Muhammad, exposing Muhammad. All right. Now, this is the article I want you to save. Okay. Are you ready? I won't be able to focus on the channel because I'll be reading. Okay. So if there's any mods here, mods, do me a favor. Maintain control and decorum and order. Guys, be careful. Love money. Be careful of what language you use, please. Don't say expose that, you know. Say expose that demon. Expose that dog. That's even better. I don't know. Do we have any mods here this morning before I begin? Because we're about to begin. Any mods here? No, 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 none of my mods are here. My goodness, is that early for them? All right. Well, hold on. I guess not. Hold on. Well, here. Oh, Jonathan is here. He's a mod. Okay, man. Now, mods, maintain order. Let's begin. Here's the article. Here's the article again. Are you ready? <clears throat> and these are all accessible online. Are you ready? Here we go. Get ready to laugh, folks. I won't be able to focus on the comments because I got to do the reading. Okay, let's read. <clears throat> Sal Bukhari. <clears throat> Sal Bukhari, volume four, book 55, number 616. All of this in the articles. God willing, we'll put them in the description box. You can access them online. Now, the numbering for the Bukhari I'm using is different from the online version. But... You can go to sunnah.com, the link I gave you, and just type in specific words like Moses and Stone. It'll come up. Okay, volume four, <clears throat> book 55, number 616. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's apostle said, Moses was a shy person and used to cover his body completely because of his extensive shyness. One of the children of Israel heard him by saying he covers his body in this way, only because of some defect in his skin, either le leprosy or scrotal hernia. See, Moses covers his body because he's embarrassed. He's got a physical defect. Or he has some other defect. Allah wished to clear Moses of what they said about him. So one day, while Moses was in seclusion, he took off his clothes. Pay attention now. Took off his clothes. Put them on a stone. Put his, Moses put his clothes on a stone. And started taking a bath. Okay. When he had finished the bath, he moved towards his clothes so as to take them. So reach out. But the stone took his clothes and fled. Moses picked up his stick and ran after the stone saying, Oh stone, give me my garment. Till he reached a group of Ben Israel, children of Israel, who saw him naked. Then... And found him the best of what Allah had created. <whistles> wow, look at that body. Look, look, look. Hey, Yusha. Hey, uh, Elia. Look at Moses. Look at that body. Oh, my goodness. <whistles> Perfect. What do you mean? As Stone is running, as Moses is running naked, with his body all <laughs> fully exposed to men, women, and children, with a stick in his hand and chasing a, chasing a stone that's running off with his clothes. Okay? So the hadith, I'm not lying. It's what it said. Right? Found him the best of, all, of what Allah created. And Allah cleared him of what they had accused him of. The stone stopped. And Moses took and put his garment on and started hitting the stone with the stick. By Allah, the stone still has some traces of the hitting. Three or four or five marks. This is what Allah refers to in his saying. And now quotes the Quran saying, this Quranic verse is about this story. O you who believe, be you not like those who anoint Moses. But Allah proved his innocence of that which they alleged. And he was honorable in Allah's sight. Chapter 33, verse 69 of the Quran. Did you guys, did you actually hear what I just read? This is from Bukhari. I gave all the links. The most authentic collection of narrations attributed to Muhammad. So a Sunni Muslim can't say this is silly because he's saying Muhammad is silly. Did you catch it? Let me read another version. <clears throat> Let me read another version. I'm going to read from Sahih Muslim this time, okay? Sahih Muslim, 
Book 30, number 5850. Book 30, number 5850. It's all in the articles I gave you the links to. Abu Huraira reported that Moses was a modest person. He was never seen naked. And Bani Israel, the children of Israel, used to say, he was afraid to expose his private part because he had been suffering from scrotal hernia. He, Moses, one day, took bath in water and placed his garments upon a stone. The stone, the stone, Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue, save me from stammering. The stone began to move on quickly. He followed that and struck it with the help of a stone, saying, O oh stone, my garment, O oh stone, my garment, O oh stone, until it stopped near the big gathering of Israel. And this verse was revealed pertaining to the incident. Chapter 30, <clears throat> 33, verse 69 was revealed about this. O oh, you will believe, be not like those who maligned Moses, but Allah cleared him of what they said, and he was worthy of regard with Allah. You guys understood what you just read or no? I'm not lying. Here's the article again. I'm going to repost the links. I'm not lying. This is what it says. Okay, now. <laughs> you let me, do you understand why this happened? Okay, let me explain why it happened. Okay. Let me explain why. The children of Israel were annoying Moses and saying that he has a physical defect. So guess how Allah honored Moses? When Moses is taking a bath fully naked, Allah causes the stone to take off with his clothes, forcing Muhammad, Muhammad, sorry, Lord Jesus, save me from error, rebuke my stammering in Jesus' name. Please, Lord Jesus, help me to focus. Because again, I'm thinking, Muhammad, how stupid he is. So Moses is taking a bath. His clothes are on a stone. The stone takes off, and Moses runs after it naked, his body fully naked, in full view of the entire nation of Israel. Men, women, and children are seeing Moses naked, his genitalia exposed in front of men, women, and children in order for Allah to honor Moses and silence the Jews the Israelites who thought that Moses had a physical defect, so he can see that his body is perfect and flawless. <whistles> ow, ow, Moses, you one gorgeous beast. Ow! That's how Allah vindicated his servant Moses. Stone taking off with his clothes, so Moses can appear fully nude in front of men, women, and children. And then Moses catches up to the stone and starts beating the stone with a stick. Some narrations say, what a stone for taking off with his clothes. And this is Muhammad's teaching. Did that sink in? Did that sink in? Okay. Now, this is just the beginning. We got more now. Okay. Now, let me give you the links to these again. Okay. Let me give you the links. Here it goes. This is part one and then part two. Let me get you part two. Okay. Let's go through Muhammad's silly teachings. These are all from Sahil Bukhari. Sahil Bukhari. No, that's not that's not Muhammad Hijab. That's Mimi in a cap. Okay. Sahil Bukhari. Are you guys ready now? You're focused. And then mods, please, if you can, focus on the comment section. If you see people saying silly stuff or blasphemous stuff, get rid of them. Okay. So are we ready? Okay. I can't. Copy and paste them. So I'm just going to read them from the articles. Let's begin. Hey, our talk blog. I already embarrassed you and muzzled you like a stupid dog. You're filthy, stupid, scum, son of the devil. And you won't call me again because you're a coward. And stop living in mommy's basement and get off the meds, dude. Why don't you call me? Yeah, you hypocrite. You just insulted me, blaspheming the Trinity, and you're talking about fruits you filthy, overgrown monkey. <laughs> Have you seen how he looks? <laughs> you come out of a comic book. You stupid little, dumb little demonic. Tell mommy to stop supporting you, to take back your allowance. Stupid slime. Sorry about that. The demons are manifesting. Yeah, this is the guy who's too mentally challenged to understand basic logic. All right, guys. Rabbi, don't start it again, man. 
You want? You sure about that? Here, I'll, I'll talk black. I'm going to block you. I'm going to call you. You ready? Are you ready, guys? Let me muzzle this Muhammad, and he's worse than Muhammad. You ready? I'm going to call you, and I'm going to embarrass you. Get your Bible ready. Are you ready? Oh, you're not on Skype? Okay, here, let me show you where you're at. Here, let me show you where you got. Go to your father, the devil. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Yeah, these demons start manifesting. He's worse than a Mohammedan because he thinks he's a Christian, perverts the gospel. Okay, guys, let's focus. You ready now? What did Muhammad teach about gas and garlic? Okay, let's read. This comes from Sal Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 4, Number 137. Guys, pay attention now. Pay attention. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, The Salah, the prayer of a person who does haddath, passes urine, stool, or wind, is not accepted till he performs the ablution. A person from Hadramaut asks Abu Huraira, What is haddath? Right? Haddath means the passing of wind from the anus. What does it mean, Abu Huraira? Passing wind from the anus, Sal Bukhari, volume one, number 137. Do you understand what you just read? Let me post it again. No, get rid of him. Block him. Don't let him hear. Allah does not hear your prayer if you pass wind from the anus. Now, for the life of me, I didn't know you could pass wind from a part other than your anus. Why did it have to be so detailed? Why didn't Abu Hurairah simply say, hey, that's when you fart? But no, he had to get graphic. It means to pass wind from your anus. So do you know that if you fart when you pray, if you fart when you pray because of the stench, your prayer won't reach Allah because Allah does not like the smell of your farts. So please don't pass wind from your anus, pass it through your nose. Okay? That's Muhammad's teaching. Okay? I gave you the links to it. You go back and click on it. Again. Now watch here. Narrated Abdullah. This is volume one, Sal Bukhari, book four, number 139. Volume one, book four, number 139. Narrated Abdullah bin Yazid al-Ansari. He asked Allah's messenger. He asked Allah's messenger about a person who imagined to have passed when he thought he had farted during Salah. Allah's messenger replied, he should not leave his Salah unless he hears sound or smells something. What a genius. Wow, what a genius. Man, me and Ariel are ready to take Shahada. Ariel and me are going to take Shahada. Tell me this is not a prophet, man. You see what he said? Guy said, there was someone who is uncertain whether he passed when he farted. No, tell him. He has to hear the fart. If he hears the fart, then he goes and performs ablution and prays again. Wow. Wow. Uh, here goes. Here goes the dog again. Okay, uh, we got the, the dog again. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we got this, uh, this satanic dog again. Hey, you there? Butch, hello. Yeah, can you open up your Bible? Yeah, yeah. Can you go to Jeremiah yeah, four twenty two? First, go to Jeremiah four twenty two. Tell you to. Can you go to can, Jeremiah four twenty two? Are you going to get dialed? Just the Bible. Man? Are you scared? Yeah, I'm. I'm it scared of your ugly big, face. Scared. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to ask you a question. You're go to Jeremiah four twenty two before I muzzle you, you like one. your mother should have muzzled you. Peace and shalom and love. I'm coming. Ah, shit. Just not tell you to watch it. You stupid dumb. Dog, let's see. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah, the demon. Now tell me, this guy's not a bastard of the devil, a son of the devil. I'm exposing Muhammad, and this demon, this bastard of the devil, calls him the spiritual bastard, spiritual son of the devil. Same father here. They have the same father. But anyway, guys, be careful when you're praying. If you think you farted, no, no, no. You got to hear the fart. If you hear the fart, you're in trouble, according to Muhammad, because Allah does not like people to fart when they pray so be careful now uh, uh, how can you not become muslim after these teachings how can you not become muslim after these teachings now according to muhammad when allah created adam he created him so tall let me read it volume four of sal bukhari number 543 narrated abu huraira the prophet said, Allah created Adam, and his height was 60 cubits. 
His height was 60 cubits. Now let me read Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Number 544. Remember, 60 cubits. We're going to get to that. Married Abu Huraira. Allah's apostle said, the first group of people who will enter paradise will be glittering, glittering like the full moon, and those who follow them will glitter like the most brilliant star in the sky. They will not urinate. See, you won't need to urinate when you're there in paradise. Relieve nature. You won't need to take a crap in paradise. You won't spit or have any nasal secretions. Thank you, Muhammad. I really needed to know that when I get to paradise, I won't be pissing anymore, crapping anymore, <laughs> or having nasal secretion. Thank you. What would we do without you? What would we do if we didn't know this information? But now it gets better. Their combs will be of gold. <whistles> ladies, ladies, you're going to have golden combs, ladies. <whistles> golden combs. What do you make? What are you makers? Okay. Golden combs and their sweat will smell like musk. Who would have thunk it? Guys, even your sweat will smell like perfume. Ah. What do you make? Allah. 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 Oh, my sweat. I want to keep sweating. Guys, I want to keep sweating. Notice in paradise, I won't piss. I won't crap, I won't have nasal secretions, but I'll still be sweating. So I'll still be sweating, but see, there's an advantage. When I sweat, I'll smell like parfum. I'll be smelling like parfum. Man, bro, your sweat, we need to bottle it, right? Call it Al Jannah. Here's a bottle of Angel. And okay, anyway, but with that said, now here, here's what's gonna happen when you get there. Watch here now. When you get there, all of them will look like and resemble, all of them will look alike. All of them will look alike and resemble their father, father Adam, 60 cubits tall. So did you catch it? When Allah created Adam, he was 60 cubits tall. And when we go to Jannah, we will be 60 cubits, cubits tall and we will all look alike. Now, guys, let me break down the absurdity and stupidity of this narration. 60 cubits tall. Here goes the filthy spiritual bastard of Satan. Scum bastard of Satan. Dude, go bark somewhere else. No one wants to, to give you attention. You demon. Lord Jesus rebuke you for his glory. Now, you know what? You know how tall 60 cubits tall is? That's 90 feet. According to Muhammad, Allah created Adam 90 feet tall. According to Muhammad, when you enter paradise, you will be 90 feet tall, and we will all look alike. Now, that scares me. You know why that scares me? Guys, understand the silly, silliness of this narration? If we all look alike, that means what exactly? The women are going to look like the men, and the men are going to look like the woman? Or did Muhammad mean we will look alike in that we will have the same height? If we all look alike... The last thing I want is one of my wives to be the female version of me, looking like me. And I'm pretty certain the wives don't want a male version of them. Well, yeah, well, you have some women that are arrogant, think they're gorgeous. Yeah, so maybe that's different. But definitely, I do not want a woman looking like me if I go to Muhammad's Jannah, Allah's Jannah, his heavenly brothel, because I don't want... To, making, to make love to a woman that looks like me. And if you're 90 feet tall, my goodness, that's going to be scary. But can I ask a question to the Muslims here? If Adam was created 90 feet tall, where in the world did we come from? And why are we so short? If Adam was 90 feet tall, how tall was Eve? Was she 90 feet too? Did they give birth to children who were 90 feet? Now, some narrations say that mankind has been shrinking ever since. So that means initially Adam's children were 90 feet tall and they started shrinking over time until we get to be 6 feet, 5 feet, 8 feet. Man, that's a lot of shrinking. 
Or should we assume that Adam was 90 feet, but Eve was normal stature? But how does a 90 feet tall, tall man make love to such a tiny woman? And how does such a tiny woman get pregnant with children that big? She's got one huge birth canal, if you ask me. Yeah. Hmm. You get it now? Are you not ready to take Shahada? And I'm not making it up. Here's the link again, in case you think I'm lying. Here's the link. Here's the link. You guys think I'm lying, right? So we got some better. You got it? Okay, now, guys, this will convince you. This will convince you that Muhammad is the greatest medical doctor the world has never known. Muhammad is the greatest medical doctor the world has never known. Never known. You know why? Because the medical advice he gives and the advice about hygiene and disease prevention is unparalleled in the history of mankind. Sal Bukhari, Volume 1, Number 236. Narrated Maimuna. Maimuna. Allah's messenger was asked regarding ghee, cooking butter, in which a mouse had fallen. He said, take out the mouse and throw away the ghee around it and use the rest. <whistles> Who would have thunk it? Why didn't I think of that before? A mouse dies in my tub of butter. Don't throw out the butter. Take out the mouse and throw out the part of the butter that the mouse has contaminated and then use the rest of the butter to cook with or to eat with. Guys, come on. Okay, dozo. Let me read, let me read the translation again and then I'm going to have to send you on your merry way. Yeah. Narrated Maimuna, Allah's messenger was asked regarding ghi, cooking butter. This is the translator, Muhammad Muskhan Khan. Now, Dozo, do I need to get rid of you now for being that stupid to tell me what it doesn't mean when the Muslim is telling me that's what it means? Okay? Don't be a chief before I send you on a reservation. Okay, now, here's another one that's even better. Sal Bukhari, volume 4, number 537. Sal Bukhari, volume 4, number 537. Narrated Abu Huraira. The prophet said, if a housefly falls in the drink of any one of you, he should dip it, dip it in the drink. For one of its wings has a disease and the other has the cure for the disease. My goodness. Why in the world are you swatting flies? You... Kufar, Kufar, you wicked, dirty kafirs. You work, wicked, dirty kafirs. Why are you swatting flies? Grab the fly by its multiple legs, tiny legs. Dip it in your drink. Because one of the wing has the disease. The other wing has its cure. What is wrong with you? When are you going to be Muslim and benefit from the wisdom of Muhammad, what is wrong with you, man? I, you guys are disgusting me, you kafar. You deserve to be subjugated by Mimi Nikab, Muhammad Hijab, and his girlfriend, Ali Drama. You deserve that. Really. If this doesn't convince you to follow Muhammad and Allah is the only God, you deserve to be subjugated, honestly. Okay, honestly, you guys, you, you, you unbelievers disgust me, seriously. Okay, speaking of which, where do children come from? Al Bukhari, volume four, number 546. Sal Bukhari, volume four, number 546. As for the resemblance of the child to its parents, if a man has sexual intercourse with his wife and gets a dis discharge first, the child will resemble the father. And if the woman gets her discharge first, the child will resemble her. <whistles> My goodness. Ladies, ladies, do you want 
a girl that resembles you, when you're making out with your husband, make sure you have an orgasm before him. Men, if you want a boy, a boy that looks like you, make sure you have an orgasm before your wife. Because according to Muhammad, the world's greatest scientist, who is an expert on genetics and DNA, whoever has an orgasm first, the child will then look like that parent. Even if you have a girl, if you have an orgasm first, you're the man, the girl will resemble you and your family. Come on, guys. Honestly, are you not convinced of taking shahada? Honestly, are you not convinced of taking shahada? So now, guys, if you're married, and the only time you can have sex is when you're married. No sex before marriage. Okay, now, Ariel, it looks like his aunt. Is that on your father's side, Ariel, or your mother's side? If it's on your father's side, that means, again, I, I, I'm sorry. Your dad had his orgasm first. I know it's disgusting to think. Oh, mother's side? No disrespect. I was gonna, you know what that means according to Muhammad, right? The mommy had her orgasm first. Sorry, brother, but hey, that's why you look like mommy's sister. That's Hey, that's Muhammad. Don't blame me. Okay, Let me read another narration in case it didn't sink in. Let me read another narration in case it didn't sink in. Okay. <clears throat> Volume 8, number 113. Just al Bukhari. Then I'm going to read another English version of that hadith. Narrated Zainab bin Um Salama. Um Sulaim. Oh, Allah's apostle. Verily, Allah is not shy of telling you the truth. Is it essential for a woman to take a bath after she had a wet dream? <whistles> Muhammad. Even women have wet dreams. So what do you say about that? He said, yes. If she notices discharge, discharge. On that, Um Salama laughed. <laughs> she laughed and said, does a woman get a nocturnal sexual discharge? He said, how then does her son resemble her, his mother? Did you see the wisdom there? The woman is saying, wait, Ma Muhammad, women have discharges, meaning they too have like sperm, like men. And then Muhammad says, you stupid woman. How then does the son resemble the mother? Stupid. The reason why the son looks like the mother is because you have sperm. And he said, actually, it's yellow. Your sperm is yellow. And when your sperm comes out before the man, that's why the son looks like you. See, now refute me. I'm Allah's messenger. Allah's messenger, no best. Man, that's it. You got me. That's it. Uh, I can't refute that. Wow. Now let me read another version. Another version. Not another version. And... Uh, an English translation of that hadith that's different, a different English translation. This is from Aisha Buli. The one I read earlier was from Muhammad Muskan Khan. Okay, it is related. This is from Aisha Buli. It's all in the article. That Anas said, when Abdullah bin Salam heard of the arrival of the Messenger of Allah, this is a different English version of Sal Bukhari by Aisha Buli. She's narrating, she's narrating the hadith where Muhammad is asked, by a Jew, Muhammad is asked by a Jew, why, why does a child resemble the father or the mother's brother? Okay, When Abdullah ibn Salam heard of the arrival of the Messenger of Allah in Medina, he went to him and said, I will ask you about three things which only a prophet knows. Now notice, the Jews testing Muhammad. Three things that only a prophet knows. So let's see if you know them. What is the first sign of the hour? What is the first food that the people of the garden will eat? And for what reason does a child resemble his father? Or for what reason does he resemble his maternal uncles, his mother, his mother's brothers? What is the reason a child will look like the father or look like his mother's brothers? The Messenger of Allah said, Jibreel, alayhi salam, Gabriel has just informed me about them. He said that Abdullah said, that is the enemy of the Jews among the angels. We don't like Gabriel. He's our enemies. Right? He's our enemy. The messenger of Allah said, the first sign of the hour will be a fire which will gather people from the east to the west. The first food that the people of the garden will eat 
will be the extra bit of the liver of the fish. So uh, the first food that you're going to eat in Muhammad's Jannah, Allah's brothel, is the extra bit of liver of the fish. As for the child's resemblance, why does the child look like the father or his mother's brothers? When the man has intercourse with the woman and his discharge is first, it will resemble him. If she has a discharge first, then it will resemble her. The Jew said, he said, I testify you are the messenger of Allah. Okay, guys, let's break down this narration. Let's break down this narration. The Jew told Muhammad, I'm going to ask you three questions. Three questions that only a prophet knows. Muhammad answered, the Jew says, I bear witness you're the messenger of Allah. Guys, can I ask you a question? Guys, are you ready? Can I ask you a question? If you're ready, I want to ask you a question. If only a prophet knows the answers to the three questions, how did the Jew know what the answers were if he's not a prophet? You see how stupid Muhammad is? How stupid all of the Quran is? How stupid the Hadith compilers are? The Jew said, I'm going to ask you three questions only a prophet knows. Well, how did that Jew know the answer to the questions if he wasn't a prophet? Can you help me understand the logic? Right? He said, only a prophet knows the answers. And when Muhammad answered, he goes, you answered correctly. I bear witness to your messenger. I would say, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Muhammad and Abdullah. Yeah, I'm a little baffled. Why are you baffled? Not only does guy say that if I have an orgasm and I just charge my semen before my wife does, then a child looks like me. But if my wife has an orgasm and she just charges her semen, then the child will look like her. That in itself confuses the heck out of me. But hey, you're Allah's messenger, so you must know better than science. You know, okay, put that aside. But didn't you just say only a prophet knows the answers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you know the answers? Oops. Busted. Surprise, Abdullah. Surprise, Mimi Hijab, who needs to wear niqab, and your girlfriend Ali Drama needs to run to his mama. Okay, well, we got more. Oh, now we got. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Okay, now this one you guys already know. But let's read it again. You guys already know this, okay? Because you've heard us talk about this and other shows. But again, Sal Bukhari, volume four, number 421. Sal Bukhari, volume four, number 421. Narrated Abu Dhar, the prophet asked me at sunset, do you know where the sun goes at the time of sunset? Where does it go? We know it sets in a... In, in a <clears throat> Muddy spring, that we know. Muddy spring, that we know. But when it leaves, rises out of the muddy spring, where does it go? Watch here. I replied, Allah and his messenger know better. He said, it goes till it prostrates itself under the throne. The mm -hmm. sun travels until it gets to the throne of Allah and prostrates under the throne of Allah and takes the permission to rise again. And it is permitted. And then a time will come when it will be about to prostrate itself, but its prostration will not be accepted and it will ask permission to go on its course, but it will not be permitted, but it will be ordered to return once it has come and so it will rise in the West. And that is the interpretation. And Muhammad says, this is the meaning of the Quranic verse, the verse in the Quran that says, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term appointed this is the decree of Allah, the Almighty, the All-Knowing. So now notice, when the Muslims quote the Quran to say, see, the Quran knows that the sun is traveling on an orbit. They do not tell you how Muhammad interpreted the verse. Muhammad says that the sun travels to the throne of Allah, bows before the throne of Allah, and then asks Allah, can I go back? And Allah will say, go back. But then the day will come when the sun prostrates and, and will say, Allah, Allah, can I go back? No. Now you got to come from the other side 
and rise from the east, not from the west. Who would have thunk that even the sun is Muslim? The sun is Muslim. Guys, the sun travels to Allah and does sujood, performs sajda, prostrates, and speaks to Allah and says, Ya Allah, can I go back please? Pretty please? Can I go back, Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, sure, go back. But then the sun one day will come. The sun one day will come. And the sun will prosper and say, Oh Allah, Ya Allah, Allahumma azwajal. Can I go back? He'll say, no. No, you can't. Why Allah? Why can't I go back? Because now I want you to go back in a different direction and rise from the west. And then the sun will say, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Thank you, Allah. Now let me read to you the commentary of the translator. Are you ready? Let me read to you the commentary of the translator, the one who translated Sa'ad Bukhari, Dr. Muhammad Muskan Khan. Look what he says. Watch here. I'm not lying. Look what he says. It's in the article. The procedure of the sun mentioned in this hadith and similar other things mentioned in the Quran, like the prostration of the trees. The Quran says the trees prostrate, herbs and stars, etc. Chapter 55, verse 6 of the Quran are beyond our limited knowledge of this universe. It is interpreted that these are mentioned <clears throat> so because our limited understanding of the people <clears throat> at that time <clears throat> about the Matters of the universe. Let me repeat again. Are beyond our limited knowledge of this universe. It is interpreted that these are mentioned so because of our limited understanding of the people at that time about the matters of the universe. In other words, we have no idea what in the world Muhammad was talking about. We have no clue how this could be true. We cannot understand how this even makes sense. A lot of our understanding of modern science, but still Allah and his messenger know better. So even though this is so embarrassing and makes us look like fools in the eyes of the world, makes us look like illiterate morons for following this illiterate nomad, still Allah and his messenger know best. You got it? Not making it up. Okay, we got some more. Let's look at some more. I got a lot, but I want to go to the ones that are, right? <clears throat> Most relevant. I got a lot, but let me just see. Bon okay, this one. I love this one. You ready? A lot of this stuff you've seen in the Islamicide series. Volume 4 of Sal Bukhari, number 779. Volume 4 of Sal Bukhari, number 779. Narrated Abdullah. We used to consider miracles as Allah's blessing, but you people consider them to be a warning. Once we're now, pay you got to pay attention to this one. This one, you got to pay attention. Once we were with Allah's apostle on a journey and we ran short of water, he said, Bring the water remaining with you. The people brought a utensil con <laughs> containing a little water. <clears throat> he placed his hand in it and he said, Come to the blessed water and the blessings from Allah. I saw the water flowing among. From among the fingers of Allah's apostle. And no doubt. Before I, I'm going to stop right there. Notice he put his fingers in the water. Because I'm going to flip. Now notice what you just read. He put his fingers in, in, in the water. His hand. Received the blessing. In other words. Muhammad's fingers. Were a miraculous water sprinkler. Who would have thunk it? Muhammad's fingers turned into a miraculous water sprinkler. Come to the blessing. Here, let me water your grass while we're at it. Oh, I, I forgot. We're in the desert. No grass. Forgive me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Oof. Okay. Here, let me quote that so you don't think I'm lying. Okay, here you go. Okay, watch here. But the, the last part gets better. Okay, the last part gets, gets better. Watch here. He placed his hand in it. Here it goes. So you know, I'm making up. And said, come to the blessed water. And the blessing 
right? And the blessing is from Allah. I saw the water flowing from among the fingers of Allah's apostles. Who would have thunk Muhammad's fingers are water sprinklers? Wow. I'm blown away. Who's ready now to take Shahada? Who's ready now to take Shahada? Oh, but now you want let me read the rest of the hadith. Okay. I saw the water flowing from among the fingers of Allah's apostle, and no doubt, guys, get ready to pass out from laughter. And no doubt, here's the rest of it, guys. No doubt. We heard the meal, the food, glorifying Allah when it was being eaten by him. You didn't catch it. No doubt. We heard the food, the meal, glorifying Allah when Muhammad was about to eat it. Whoa! Whoa! Guys, Muhammad's food would speak to him. Muhammad's food would be praising Allah right at the moment Muhammad is about to eat. In other words, when Muhammad would pick up food, the food would say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I'm going to be eaten, digested by Allah's messenger. Oh Allah, how fortunate that I'm going to be in the mouth of your messenger. I'm going to be chewed by the teeth of your messenger. And I'm going to go down the digestive tract of your messenger and come out either as urine or poo-poo of your blessed messenger. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Thank you, Allah. Ha, 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 ha. You, 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 I'm not like, hey, it's in the article here. Guys, save the article. Okay. Okay, now... <laughs> Sorry, you see why not I wore my Batman shirt? You see why I wore my Batman shirt? Man, this is straight out of a comic book, right? Even Batman is more realistic than Muhammad's hadiths, right? Superman is more realistic than Muhammad's hadiths. Okay, now, but, now here's what's hilarious about it. Here's what's hilarious about it. I finally understood why... In the Three Stooges. You remember the Three Stooges? Maybe I'm dating myself. There's one scene in which Curly, my twin brother, Curly, was trying to eat food. And every time he eat food, it bite his nose. Have you seen that scene? He go, and then it would start. You remember what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not lying. Have you seen that Three Stooges? I love Three Stooges. Three Stooges, the Marx Brothers, Abbott and Costello, and the Honeymooners, my favorite. But in that scene, every time, every time, Curly, remember Curly's a Jew. The Three Stooges are Jewish, okay? Every time he go eat, it bite him. He go, <clears throat> and he start pounding it. I always wondered why the food hated Curly and would bite him every time it tried to eat. Did you know why? Now I found out why. Because food is Muslim. Food is Muslim. And Muslims hate unbelieving Jews. So food only like to be eaten by Muslims. So when a Jew who's not a Muslim eats it, the food gets offended and bites back. How dare you eat me? Only Allah's messenger and Muslims can eat me. Get away from me, Yahudi. That's why now the mystery has been solved. Now you understand? When Muhammad would eat food, the food would be glorifying Allah that the blessed mouth of Muhammad and the teeth of Muhammad would devour the food because the food is Muslim. But Curly was a Jew. Curly didn't believe in Islam. Curly was a dirty kafir, a Jew, a kafir. The food hated him for the sake of Allah and Muhammad, his messenger. Wow. Demi, Demi, if you're not Muslim, you'll be coming off the hinges, Demi. Demi.
Timmy, Timmy, Cocoa Puffs. You get it now? Okay, but this one, you should have remembered from the Islamicai series. Okay, watch here. Volume 7, Sad Bukhari. Volume 7, number 366. Narrated Ibn Abbas. The prophet said, narrated Ibn Abbas. The prophet said, when you eat, do not wipe your hand till you have licked it or had it licked by somebody else. What do you make? Wait, 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 wait. When you do what, Muhammad? When you eat, do not wipe your hand till you have licked it or had it licked by someone else. Finger licking good. Now I see where KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, got their motto, finger looking good. See, Muslims, KFC is Islamic. KFC is halal. KFC is Sharia compliant. It's following the hadith of your prophet. It's saying finger looking good. So if you eat this chicken, you got to get your fingers licked. Guys, who would have thought? KFC, KFC was Sharia compliant. Who would have thought Kentucky Fried Chicken? Kentucky Fried Chicken is Islamic. That means Colonel Sanders must have been a closet Muslim because he made it part of his bottle. My chicken is finger looking good. And Allah's messenger said, when you eat, don't wipe, lick your fingers or have your compadre lick your fingers. So guys, today I'm going to be meeting with a Christian brother. He knows who he is. He's here. Today, my Christian brother is going to go out with me to have lunch. You better get ready to start licking my very fat, juicy fingers, brother. So if you don't want to lick my fingers, don't meet me for lunch today. You'll be in trouble, my friend. You'll be in trouble because when I eat the food, I say, licky, licky, come here, licky, licky, <laughs> licky, licky. Yeah. You'll be in trouble. You're going to have to lick my finger, bad boy. Hmm. Are you now ready? Are you now ready to take Shahada? Yeah, baby. I'm ready, man. man. What's this place, man? Are you ready, man? Would be like this, man? Oh, man. I love this. I love this. <laughs> oh. All right. Here's another beautiful wisdom from Allah and his messenger. Did you know in Islam, Muslims are to kill geikos, lizards? <clears throat> Do you know why? Muhammad ordered the killing of lizards because he's a genius. He's a genius. He is truly a messenger. Sal Bukhari, volume 4, number 579. Narrated Um Sharik. Allah's apostle ordered that the salamander, <clears throat> you know, type of lizard, should be killed. Why? Why kill the salamander? Because he said, it, the salamander, blew the fire on Abraham. The Quran talks about Abraham being thrown in the fire. And according to Muhammad, it was a lizard that blew the fire in Abraham in order to get Abraham burnt to a crisp. So the punishment of all lizards is that now you must kill the salamander. You understand what that means? Geico needs to be boycotted. Geico must shut down because Geico has a gecko. I said Geico, right? Gecko. That's what I meant to say. See, I got confused with the commercial. Geico has a gecko. As its representative, Muslims need to bo boycott and protest. How dare you, Geico, have a gecko, a salamander, a lizard representing you when Allah's messenger said the gecko, not the Geico. See, I got confused with the, with the car insurance. A gecko's ancestor blew the fire on Abraham to get Abraham burnt to a crisp. 
And now the punishment of all gecko, all lizards, is they must be killed. How dare you go against Allah's messenger? So now, guys, you have proof. KFC is Islamic compliant, Sharia compliant, compliant. it's Islamic. But Geico is anti-Islam. They're Islamophobes. You understand? If you care for Allah and his messenger, you must constantly buy chicken from KFC. It's Sharia compliant. But you must boycott Geico. You must get it shut down. You must protest and say that Geico hurts my feelings as a Muslim because they have a gecko representing it, and this goes against Allah and his messenger, and I will not tolerate Islamophobia as part of my car insurance. No, I say no to Geico. Right? Okay. But you know what's weird? Here's what's weird. You guys really want to laugh? Kenneth White, you're a liar from the pit of hell. You are a son of the devil like your prophet. It's Sahil Bukhari. Sahil Bukhari, you wicked liar. I know you're ashamed of your prophet, and we're ashamed of your disgusting prophet. Sahil Bukhari, you don't get more authentic, you liar. Okay? Let me post it. Here it goes. Sahil Bukhari. Now, guys, you know what's silly? You know what's silly? Now you need to, and I want you to hear this. Notice that the salamander... The geckos, the lizards, are being punished for the crime of one lizard. A lizard who lived thousands of years ago at the time of Abraham. A lizard who blew the fire to get Abraham burnt. And yet because of the sin of that lizard, all other lizards are now suffering. Talk about original sin. Muhammad taught the original sin of the lizard. The original lizard who committed the original sin thereby bringing punishment on all lizards that came after him. And yet Muslims tell us that they don't believe in original sin, but they believe in the original lizard. So they don't... <laughs> They'll tell you original sin we don't believe in, but you do believe in the original lizard. A lizard that blew the fire in Abraham is now the reason why all lizards must be killed by Muslims because of the sin of that one lizard. But the lizard can say, wait, wait, wait. I take shahada. I'm a Muslim. I don't believe in original sin or original lizard. You can't punish me for the sin of my ancestor. That's not fair, Muslim. So Islam has the doctrine of the original lizard. Right? You loving it? Surprise, Muhammad. Surprise, Muhammad. Now, I'm almost done because we want to talk about some more and then we'll be done. Hold on. Surprise, Muhammad. <whistles> what are you makers? A couple of more will be done. Yep. So, guys, make sure you hit the like button. Rewatch this. I'm going to put the links in the description box and I'll give them to you before I end the show again. You have my permission to print these out, upload them to your websites. You also have permission to take clips from this session or even do a YouTube session just reading the hadiths. That's all you did. Just read them so people can see how silly, stupid, and irrational Sunni Islam is. Why do you think Muhammad, I'm sorry, why do you think Muslims like Shabir Ali want to disassociate, disassociate, themselves from the hadith even though shabir pretends to be a sunni muslim good now what does muhammad teach about satan let's have some fun volume 2 book 21 number 245 volume 2 book 21 number 245 narrated abdullah a person was mentioned before the prophet and he was told that he kept on sleeping till morning and has not gotten up for the Fajr early morning prayer. See, he didn't get up for the morning prayer even though the call to prayer was made. The Adhan, he didn't hear the Adhan. Why didn't he hear it? Look at Muhammad's wisdom. Look at Muhammad's wisdom. Man, he's amazing. Okay, watch here. The prophet said, Satan urinated in his ears. 
Satan pissed in his ears. You understand what that means? You know why that man did not hear the call to prayer in the morning? Because as he was sleeping, Satan came and started pissing in his ears. Muhammad Hijab's golden showers. The original golden shower by Satan himself. Now you see where Muhammad Hijab got golden shower from? He got it from Shaitan, his father, Muhammad's father. Muhammad said he couldn't hear the call to prayer because Satan said, oh, wow, that looks like a nice ear. Let me piss in it. We were sailing all on the moonlight day. Muhammad said Satan pissed in his ears. Now I want you to go to Mimi Nikab, a.k.a. Muhammad Hijab, Ali Drama's girlfriend, and say, Hey, now I know where you got golden shower from. You got it from Shaitan, the devil, your father, Muhammad's father, because it seems that one day you woke up and you caught Satan pissing in your ears, and some of that piss splattered on your face, Muhammad Hijab. Here again, you think I'm lying? Here you go. Here you go. The prophet said, Satan urinated in his ears. Okay. But it gets a little better. Watch this one. Al-Bukhari, volume four. Sayyid Bukhari, volume four, number 516. Narrated Abu Huraira. The prophet said, if anyone rouses from sleep and performs wudu, ablution before prayer, he should wash his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice, three times. And he asked the Muslims, in the morning, when you snort water in and out of your nose three times, why do you do that? Many of them don't know. But here's Muhammad's genius answer. Muhammad, messenger of God, why do I snort water in and out of my no nose three times? Why? Pray tell. Why, Muhammad? Because Satan has stayed in the upper part of your nose all the night. Satan has stayed in the upper part of your nose all the night. So you got to flush him out, guys. Who would have thunk it? When I'm sleeping, Satan decides to park in the upper part of my nose and sleep in the upper part of my nose, which is why I snore, because he's blocking my airwaves, guys. Now you see why you snore. Wow. Wow. Timmy. Wow. Now you see why I keep you up at night. You see why I snore and you keep shouting at me, Timmy, about to come off the hinges? Dude, it's not my fault. Satan is blocking the airways through my nostril. Force me to breathe through my mouth, dude. At least you can get up and just, you know, throw some water in my nostrils. You see now why Muslims, you see why now Muslims snort water in and out of their nose? You know why? Satan parks there. So now here I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oosh. I'm sorry, dude. I, I have to laugh too. Woo. Okay. Do you see why? Do you see why you have to snort? Water in and out of your nose three times. But here's my question for Kenneth White, who's embarrassed of his prophet, ashamed of his prophet. And I thank God, I pray Jesus keeps shaming you until you repent and give your life to Jesus Christ. Here's my question. If Satan is in the nose of Muslims, does that mean Satan is omnipresent? If he's in my nose and your nose and her nose and his nose and he's in everyone's noses at night, does that mean Satan is omnipresent? How can Satan be in all noses at the same time if he isn't omnipresent? But if he's omnipresent, doesn't that mean Muhammad turns Satan into a god? Equal to Allah? Hmm. Secondly, I know Satan is a spirit creature that has a spiritual shape. A spiritual shape. But his spiritual shape is not made of the same substance of the earth. It's not made of the same matter of the earth. How then does water flush out a spiritual creature who has a spiritual shape? How does water flush him out? Hmm. And is Satan that small? 
I thought Satan is pretty big, but is he that small that he can fit in my the upper part of my nose? Or does Satan shrink in size and multiply himself in seven billion plus nostrils overnight? Wow. Who would have thunk it? Ah, but hold on, man. Wait, man. Wait. This one is even better. Wait, man. Wait. <laughs> this one is even better. You ready? You ready, Freddy? Okay. Right. Let me give you this one. Okay, get ready. This one. This one. Now, notice Satan farts. I'm sorry. Satan pisses in people's ears. Satan can stay in your nose, but he also does something else. Sal Bukhari, Volume 1, Number 582. <clears throat> Sad Bukhari, volume one, number 582. Narrated Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira. His name means father of the cats. Allah's apostle said, when the adhan, the call to prayer is pronounced, Satan takes to his heels running and he passes wind. Satan farts, passes wind with noise during his flight in order not to hear the adhan. When the adhan is completed, he comes back and again, takes to his heels when the iqama is pronounced. Okay, let me repeat that part again. I guess you didn't catch it. When the call to prayer is pronounced, Satan hears it, takes to his heels, and starts farting. I can't even do it. With noise during his flight in order not to hear the adhan. Here, so you guys don't think I'm lying. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Satan takes to his heels. And passes wind with noise during his flight or in order not to hear the adhan. Now, who would have thunk it? A spirit creature with a spiritual shape farts. I can't even do it, man. Farts so loud so he doesn't hear the call to prayer. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. So let me start passing gas. He pisses in people's ears. And he stays in the upper part of your nose. Now, I'm kind of scared now. You know why I'm scared? Uh, you know why I'm scared? If Satan is staying in the upper part of your nose, Muslim, does he fart when he's there? And is he pissing in your nose when he's there? How do you know if he is or if he isn't? What guarantee do you have that when Satan is in your nose, he won't start farting? And if he can fart, he can also crap, right? So if he can fart, that means he can take a crap. What guarantee do you have? He's not crapping in your nose. He's not pissing in your nose. He's not farting in your nose as you're trying to sleep. Is there a prayer that Muhammad taught you to protect against Satan from crapping in your nose, farting in your nose, and pissing in your nose? If he can piss in your ears, then he can piss in your nose when he's staying there. If he can fart, he can crap. So is he farting and crapping in your nose? How do you know? How do you protect yourself from the unholy crap, piss, and wind of shaitan? How do you know? Come on. Come on, Muslim. Guarantee me. Guarantee me that when Satan's in my nose, I, I don't have to fear that he's going to crap in my nose Fart in my nose and piss in my nose. And by the way, here's what Muhammad Muskhan Khan said about the hadith that Satan says in the upper part of your nose. Here's his explanation, guys. Look what he says. We should believe that Satan actually stays in the upper part of one's nose, though we cannot perceive how, for this is related to the unseen world of which we know nothing except what Allah tells us through his messenger. Do you see what he said? If you're a true Muslim and you're a Sunni Muslim and you believe in the Sunnah, you have to believe, you have to believe Satan actually stays in your nose. Here it is. Here it is. We should believe that Satan actually stays in the part of, upper part of one's nose, though we cannot perceive how. Okay? So now... I'm going to now just talk about Muhammad's treatment of dogs and we'll be done. Here, it's funny and sad and heartbreaking. It's funny and sad and heartbreaking. Okay.
Let me see. Should I read that? Let me see. Hold on. Let me read this. Let me read one more before I get to the dogs. Let me read this one. This one, you're going to really laugh. I'm going to read this, and then we'll read about dogs, and we'll be done. There's a lot, but I think we made the case, and I'll give you the links again. This one I have to read. This one I have to read. You ready? You guys really, you thought this was funny and hilarious and stupid? Are you ready? This one is going to make you pass out from shock, if not laughter. Not only are you going to laugh so hard that you're going to have an eight-pack because your muscles are going to hurt so much. You may even pass out from the laughter or the shock. You ready? Okay. Sal Bukhari, volume five, number 188. Sal Bukhari, volume five, number 188. Narrated, Amr bin Maymun. Amr, the son of the monkey. Maymun in Arabic means monkey. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw, get ready guys, you're going to be shocked. I saw a she-monkey, a female monkey, surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it, her, because she, it, the female monkey, had committed illegal sexual intercourse. A female monkey committed zinna, adultery, and the monkeys were stoning her for her punishment, and I, too, joined with them to stone her. Give yourself a second to digest that. Let me read it here. There it goes. Yeah. Give yourself a minute to just digest that. Here it goes. Okay. Let me read it one more time in case you didn't get it. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw she monkeys surrounded by a number of monkeys. They're all stoning it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse, I too stoned it along with them. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> How in the world did this guy know that these monkeys were stoning her because of adultery unless they spoke the same language? In other words, the monkeys and the Muslims have one thing in common. They're all... <clears throat> I was about to say it, but they're all apes. And it's interesting. His name is what? Look what his name is. Amr, Amr bin Maymun. You know what? I'm sorry. Amr bin, not bin. Bin is a daughter. Lord, save me from error. Amr bin Maymun. You know what that means? Amr, the son of the monkey. Maymun is the word monkey. So now it makes sense. Here's a human being whose father was a monkey that had sex with his human mother to produce this human being who actually is part monkey who can understand the language of monkeys. You know, Maymun in Arabic means monkey. So his name literally is Amr, the son of the monkey. And so that's why he can understand. When he saw the monkey stoning her, he's probably saying, Oh, 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 See, there you go. Who would have thought that even in the animal kingdom, animals commit adultery? Who would have thought that even in the animal kingdom, animals commit adultery? <whistles> wow. It's not just humans. Who would have thought that even animals follow Sharia? Sharia. They have Sharia from Allah. Who would have thought this, man? Wow. So let's end it with Muhammad's view of dogs. This is going to be funny, and at the same time, it's going to be heartbreaking. How Muhammad treated dogs. Okay, let me just get there, and we're going to end it. Truly a sick, demented, demonic, demonized mind. Sick, perverted, deviant, Muhammad. It is a miracle that anyone believes this man is a prophet from God. Okay? So let's just read this. He believed a lot of other things. 
Yeah, well, you know what? Here, let me give you another one. You know what? Let me give you another one. This one I have to give you. There's so much, but I'm going to give you this one, and then we'll go to the dogs. Literally, Islam goes to the dogs, literally, right? Sal Bukhari, volume four, number 524. Now pay attention to this, guys. You thought that was bad, right? Sal Bukhari, volume four, number 524. Narrated Abu Huraira. The prophet said a group of Israelites was lost. So there was a tribe of Israelites lost. Nobody knows what they did. Now watch what he says. The genius of Muhammad. Muhammad, what happened to that tribe of Israel that's gone? I know what happened to them. What happened, Muhammad? I know. What happened? I do not see them except that they were cursed and transformed into rats. What? A group of human beings? A group of Israelites? Were changed into rats? How do you know, Muhammad? Here's how he knows. For if you put the milk of a she-camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if the milk of a sheep has been put in front of it, it will drink it. I told this to Cobb who asked me, did you hear it from the prophet? The guy's shocked. You heard the prophet say this? I said, yes. Cobb asked me the question several times. I said to Cobb, do I read the Torah? Yeah, I heard it from the prophet. Now let me explain to you the genius of Muhammad. How did Muhammad know that this tribe of Israelites were turned into rats? Because in the law of Moses, you cannot consume camel. So when they would put the milk of a camel in front of the rats, the rats would say, they wouldn't drink it. But when you put the milk of a she-camel, they would drink it. Aha! Those are the Jews. See, the rats won't drink the milk of a camel because these rats are Jews who follow kosher, kashrut. That's why they'll drink the milk of, uh, uh, what is, was it? Did I say she-camel? Sorry about that. What was the milk? It was the milk of a sheep. That's right. So they don't drink the milk of a she-camel. Forgive me, guys. It's so silly that even my brain is shutting down and I'm getting discombobulated. The Lord Jesus saved me from error. So these rats won't drink the milk of a she-camel. But when you put the milk of a sheep, they drink it. Because it's lawful for Jews to eat sheep and drink the milk of sheep. But unlawful to eat camel or drink the milk of a she-camel. So the rats, because they don't drink the milk of she-camel, that's the Israelites. Allah made them rats. So these rats running around, <laughs> they are actually those Israelites that were lost. Who would have thunk it? Charles Darwin believes humans evolved from lower life forms, from primates. Muhammad has de-evolution. Where humans devolve into rats. <whistles> Muhammad was more brilliant than Charles Darwin. Now, you know what I would have done if I was there? I'd say, uh, messenger of God. Let's further confirm these rats are Israelites. Let's look at the rats to see if any of them are circumcised. Maybe the rats circumcised their tails or something. Maybe their whiskers, their teeth. I don't know. Let's see if any of them are circumcised. That will further confirm these are the Israelites. Uh, but now let me read to you. Let me read to you the note. The note of the, the translator, Dr. Muhammad Muskan Khan. He has a note here. Later on, the prophet was informed through inspiration about the fate of those Israelites. So later Allah revealed to him what really happened. They were transformed into pigs and monkeys. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Allah told Muhammad, Muhammad, let me correct you. It wasn't they were transformed into rats. No, they were changed into pigs and monkeys, Muhammad. Oh, my bad. Then these rats, maybe, I don't know, maybe they're Muslims. Maybe they took shahada. Oh, but wait, Muslims can't eat camel meat. Oh, forget that. There he goes. There's his note. All right. There you go. Let's end it now. Let's end it with dogs. Let's go there. Let me get there. What did Muhammad say about dogs? Here, volume four of Sal Bukhari, number 539. <clears throat> Narrated Abu Talha. 
The prophet said, angels do not enter a house which has either a dog or a picture in it. So if you have a dog, angels won't come to your home. If you have a picture in it, they won't come to your home. But now watch what happens here. Sahih Muslim. Now I'm going to quote Sahih Muslim. Even though it's not Bukhari, it's still authentic. Sahih Muslim, number 5246. Okay, no, notice this. The subheading says, chapter 19, angels do not enter a house in which there's a dog or a picture. Aisha reported that Gabriel made a promise with Allah's messenger to come at a definite hour. That hour came, but he did not visit him. So Gabriel said, Muhammad, I'm going to be at your house at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. came and went. He didn't show up. So Muhammad is now troubled. Like, why didn't Gabriel show up? Watch the answer. There was in his hand, in the hand of Allah's apostle, a staff. He threw it from his hand and said, never has Allah or his messenger ever, ever broken their promise. Then he cast a glance and by chance found a puppy under his cot. And said, Aisha, when did this dog enter here? She said, by Allah, I don't know. He then commanded and was turned out. When the puppy was thrown out, then Gabriel came and Allah's messenger said to him, you promised me and I waited for you, but you did not come. Whereupon he, Gabriel said, it was the dog in your house which prevented me to come. For we angels do not enter a house in which there's a dog or a picture. Now look how brilliant... Look how brilliant Gabriel is. Gabriel missed his appointed meeting with Muhammad because there was a puppy in Muhammad's house that died unbeknownst to Muhammad. When he threw up the puppy, Gabriel showed up. Now, guys, help me understand this. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Why didn't Gabriel simply meet him outside the house? Why didn't Gabriel wait for Muhammad to come out of the house and show up saying, hey, Muhammad, I'm here, but I won't enter your house because there's a dog here. Why did Gabriel not show up at all? You mean that Gabriel is so limited, he can only show up in Muhammad's house? He can't meet Muhammad outside his house? And why are angels hesitant, reticent to enter a home with dogs in it? Why would dogs cause angels not to enter your home? But then it gets worse. Because of this stupid narration. Because of this stupid narration. You know what Muhammad did? Let me read this. According to Sal Bukhari, volume 4, number 540. And because of this, Allah's apostle ordered that the dogs should be killed. They started slaughtering and killing dogs because of this teaching of Gabriel where Gabriel said, we angels don't enter homes where there are dogs or pictures. So Muhammad said, hey, start killing all the dogs. Until a woman came and said, wait, wait, hold on. We need dogs to shepherd our flocks, to protect our flocks. So then Muhammad abrogated saying, okay, kill all the dogs, accept the dogs for shepherding. And then he says this specifically. Talk about the racist prophet. Talk about the racist prophet. Sahih Muslim, number 3813. Watch here. Abu Zubair heard Jabir bin Abdullah saying, Allah's a messenger ordered us to kill dogs, and we carried out this order so much that we also killed the dog coming with a woman from the desert. Then Allah's apostle forbade their killing. He further said, it is your duty to kill the jet black dog having two spots on the eyes, for it is a devil. There you go. There you go. So he abrogated saying, okay, don't kill all the dogs. I made a stupid mistake. I abrogate that. Save the dogs for shepherding and hunting. And make sure every black dog with two spots kill it. Because notice, the black dog is a devil. Notice the pattern here. In the Hadith, Muhammad said, or we are told that Muhammad owned black slaves and sold black slaves. Muhammad had a dream in which he saw a black woman. And he said that black woman is a sign of an epidemic that's about to break out. So a black woman is a sign of disease. Muhammad owned and sold black slaves. Okay. Black dogs are the devil. According to an ancient tribute of Muhammad, when Allah created Adam, he stroked his right side and brought out numerous white people 
that looked like white ants, and he says, for paradise, and I don't care, that he stroked his, black, uh, his left shoulder and brought out numerous black people that looked like black ants, and he said, these black people that looked like black ants, for hell, and I don't care. And you're telling Muhammad it wasn't racist. Let me give you the links again. The links again. Here you go. Here are the links, guys. Part one. Click on it. Save it. Use it. Here's part two. And we're done. Lord Jesus willing, if I'm able to come tonight, I will. This is part two. Save it. And now here's the third link. You have my permission. Upload them to your websites. Print them out. Make YouTube videos out of these. Expose the silly, stupid, irrational teachings of Muhammad, proving he's a fraud, he's a false prophet, a joke, a son of the devil, and all of the Quran is the devil. He's not the true God. Don't ever disgrace the true God of the Bible or the Lord Jesus Christ by saying Muhammad's God is the God of the Bible. Here's the other link. Save them. Use the material. Hit the like button. Rewatch this, share it with others for a good laugh, and also to see how disgusting this religion is, how rational this religion is, how immoral this religion is, how demented Muhammad happens to be. May the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified. Guys, do pray for me and my daughters. Covenant with me, pray and fast if the Lord puts in your heart. The Lord Jesus keep my daughters and I healthy. May the Lord Jesus allow me if he tarries to see my daughters grow up. May they outlive me if the Lord tarries. Ask the Lord Jesus to keep my, my voice, my throat, my lungs, my chest healthy, that my voice stays strong so I can use it to glorify Christ and expose these false religions. Ask the Lord Jesus to grant my daughter salvation and me holiness, to, to glorify him, to magnify him, to delight his heart. And do pray for the provisions, the regular provisions come in to continue to do this ministry until the Lord take us home. And remember, Christ is risen. Christ is alive. He lives forevermore. He cannot die. He's almighty to save. He's the Father's love who became flesh, the eternal companion of the Spirit who's in love with us. May we be in love with him, covered by the blood of Jesus, protected from Satan by the blood of Jesus. We and our loved ones, my daughters, their mother. And may the Lord Jesus come sooner than later. And Lord, keep us in love with you. Maranate. Christ is risen is indeed. I love you guys for the sake of Jesus. I hope you're blessed. I hope you had a good laugh. And I hope you were convinced more than ever before, Islam is disgusting. It's from the pit of hell. Muhammad is a false prophet. And Christ lives. And he's Muhammad's God and judge. Lord willing, I may see you tonight. I may not because I have to do a home Bible study. Pray for that, that God will protect us from COVID-19. No one is sick. I'm not sick. We don't get each other sick as we gather together to glorify Christ. Take care. And pray the Lord helps me keep losing weight, get healthier, not to gain weight. In Jesus' name, not gain weight any, anymore, but keep losing weight as he gives me the grace to be disciplined.